This is London Calling. Well, we're at a bit uh, Blake and Marbrise. There's Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi. <laughs> we're just looking at some 9 mil stems at the moment. These are some German stems. I don't make them in Germany anymore, but um, I've still got one or, th one or two in stock. But the hole is free board to 9 mil. I've got a couple of those, actually. It's a little bit loose. A little loose. And you I noticed... do get them rattling around when you draw. They sometimes yeah. when they're loose. Um, I noticed, because I've I'd done one of your pipes, or fitted the stem. Right. And... Uh, do it twice because the first one I bought out is a nine millimeter drill and tried the filter that you gave me and it was like that it was just rattling about loose oh, right. so I used a slightly smaller drill and then it was a snug fit so that it was uh, yeah it's really rare but it's really good when you get a snug fit yeah because also it's also the length of the of the chamber yeah. So if there's too much space between the end of the filter and the beginning of the draft hole, yeah. then it just flies backwards and forwards yeah. as you draw. Yeah. So. But, um, hoping that that's about right. To, it doesn't do that too much. A little bit of movement there, I think, possibly. That's a beautiful nine mil. Lovely green plateau. Very very nice. Yeah, this is very similar. Oh, by the way, um, Eric sends his regards. You know, Eric, uh, he calls himself Blue Collar Pipes. Um, so I can look it up, but yeah, he, he's, he's, he's mad he, on your pipes. He said, yeah, he's, he's bought a lot of them. He's, yeah. he's, he does say he's uh, a YouTuber. So I saw one of these at the pipe show in Nottingham, mm. and I did a video yeah. at the time, and he saw it, and he said, get that. Yeah. 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 So I think that's what's uh, got him going. Mm. Very, very nice. Uh, we'll have a think about that. Okay. How much is it? Uh, 96. 96, okay. We shall see. I smell a Lakeland. Last time I was here, you were having some um, broken flake. Yeah, that's a Gabbard. Same Num one? Number seven broken flake yeah. mixed with Erinmore. That's right, yeah. Is that okay. still what you're smoking? Yeah, yeah. Smoking <laughs> it for 20 years now. I so, used to just smoke Erinmore, but... Uh, that's what I'm smoking, actually, yeah. in there. Yeah, I like it. Uh, what, the flake or the mixture? Uh, that happens to be the mixture. I've got yeah. some flake, mm. but um, somebody sent that to me from America, and um, I think it's got a fair bit of age on it, so it's got a little bit of sort of tanginess to it, a bit yeah. more richness, and it's just really mm. tasty. Mm. Um, I've actually bought the jar. Do you want to try some? I'll leave you some, if you like. Yeah, okay. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, I don't know if, if you can... If you've just got a program that you have to be getting on with, and I'll just watch you, or if you're able to show me a couple no, of things. No, no, I can. Uh, what I planned on doing was working on yours. Uh, on the stems, here. right? But uh, I thought I'd just make a start this morning. Uh, with this one, anyway. Yeah. So that's the panelled one. Yeah. And that's the filter you sent me, and that just sits in snugly, nice and tight. That is a smaller hole than. Uh, what do you think of the pipe? Honestly, it's nice, it's nice bit of wood. It is a nice bit of wood. Think. I've got no, I no hand in that. Eh? I've got no hand in that. Well, <laughs> in the quality of the wood. Oh well, no. <laughs> but no, no, it's nice finish. Do you have you got a, a sanding machine of some sort, or, or do you um, do it all I by use, hand? It's not all by hand though. I used um, uh, a disc attached to a um, drill. Yeah. Um, with the you know the um, Velcro yeah, things, yeah. Um, and I just went through a lot of different grades of grit. Yeah, I started off at around sixty or eighty, went to one hundred and twenty, then to five hundred, six hundred, a thousand, yeah. twelve hundred, and fifteen hundred. Well, I only go. I start at uh, one hundred and eighty and end up on four hundred. Don't go any right. finer than that. Right. Yeah. Fine. Mm. Now the only thing is that uh, the walls square, of well doesn't really matter but the the, the walls are very thin mm. I'm scared to death when I was trying it you know I hope it doesn't crack <laughs> but, yeah uh, that's not, I, I realize that it's uh but how do you bore the hole then 
Um, oh, that particular one was a. Uh, it came with, it came as a block, but with the holes drilled. All oh, right. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm yet to move to the next stage. Right. Um, I've slowly sort of been getting all the equipment together. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be my next stage, mm. but with a drill press rather than a lathe. And yeah. One of the things I wanted to really talk to you about today was about setting up the lathe and mm. setting the briar block up on the lathe and that mm. kind of thing. Because I'm quite intimidated by all of that. Because yeah. I know nothing about a lathe. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I mean, I use a sort of a lathe. I mean, it's just a, a motor with a two jaw chuck, as you can see around here. A two draw, a two jaw, two jaw, chuck, two jaw yeah. chuck, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, so I can see that's been made specifically. Yeah. But this, uh, I mean, Uncle Bordy, it's in, prehistoric in the sixties. Yeah. I think they're old then. So but it's not conventional lays, because conventional lays that have a, a, a bit this end. Tail with, end and all with, that. You know, all that stuff. But um, this is what he always used, so that's what I learnt on. Well, but, when you, if you've got the right uh, sort of chuck, then <coughs> half, it's half the battle, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. But I've never actually been to his... Uh, Workshop, but uh, Ian Walker um, uses one machine for just about everything. Right. Um, well, he hasn't got room for anything else. <laughs> well, no, but uh, um, I mean, if you start, I mean, this is this is for somebody, but it's um, it's a sort of a free hand, but uh, not too bent. Mm. And once you've got the um, the basic shape, that's just cut on a bandsaw. Right. That is going uh, to be one of my purchases, the bandsaw. That saves yeah. a lot of time, doesn't it? It does, yes. Um, you can do a lot of work with the bandsaw. It saves a lot of uh, chiselling uh, or sanding. Um, I would bore this out by hand using this, but there's nothing to stop you if you've got a, a bench yeah. uh, with a suitable drill. Got one of those, yeah. Uh, the thing is, that the drill, unless you've got lots of different drills, all your pipes are going to be the same size, but if you're making... All for yourself. That's not an issue. I, I I've think. bought a set r ranging from twelve, which is going to be too narrow, but up to twenty yeah. mil, which twenty mil is pretty standard. Yeah. Um, there's eighteen in there as well. If I want to do yeah. slightly narrower, mm. so that should be fine. Yeah. I find with these, I can I can vary it infinitely. Just if you're using the chisel. Hand, yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm pretty sure that at some stage I will get a lathe. Yeah. But I just really, I just. In my mind, I just want to feel comfortable that it's something that I can learn fairly, yeah. um, which there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to. Mm. I've, got, I've still got these earphones in, mm. sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sort of, as I say, slightly intimidated because I don't know anything about it. Mm. And that's why I really wanted to come up today, is really just to, to just see the basics, the real basics, the yeah. actual carving and turning, I'll get with practice. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure that's not an issue. It's more about setting it up, and is there any real science to, to the centering of the block and making sure that you know so that it's, so that when you're turning it, it stays true as a round, proper straight yeah, round thing. Not really. I mean, once it's spare, I mean, you, you take any sort of block. Once you get it, roughly, so that I mean, you know, you can say, well, you know, that's the middle. So you, you I mean, what I would normally do is. To test it, so you'd, uh, you'd put it what looks like in the middle. It's not a very square block. It's what looks like in the middle is a technical term for thirty years or forty years of experience. <laughs> well, no, I mean the thing is that uh, once you uh, once you've got it spinning. And you can measure how far that is from the edge, and that one is from the edge, and how far from the front and the back. Right. So you can make slight adjustments then to get it central. But the thing is, with it, uh, once you've got it more or less central to to the bowl part of the, of the block, you drill your hole and you start in 
start uh, turning the outside um, as long as you don't move the uh, block in the as truck. long as it's kept in the same place all the way along yeah um, it will be circular right if you move it obviously it won't but uh, which is the principle of turning it'll, yeah. it'll always be circular yeah. right so even even if the if for instance I drilled the hole with a drill press for argument's sake mm. and then put it in a, a chuck it wouldn't necessarily be the same, would it? No, no. no. Okay, no. So no, I'm certain that 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 would take more more than just drawing a circle on the, on the right. wood. But, right. um, okay. Mm. So uh, yeah. And presumably you'd probably chop off more of of the stem area, and so you can get a deeper turn on there, would you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, 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 these blocks are uh, cut like this so that you can. Uh, is that more for freehand uh, use, or well, or to get a bend out of it? It's uh, not well, like this, for instance. You could get a sort of a billiard out of it, like that. Yeah. You've got the hole in the stem, or if you turn it the other way up, you could get a bend out of it. Right. Whereas if one that's cut, sort of more like yeah, it's stuck like to a that, shade. Yeah. You've got to have a straight one there, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Presumably you've got an idea before you start what you want out of the block, and then... So, if you're going to make a bill, you'd probably cut that out with your bandsaw before you start. Mm. Make it a lot easier. And the same with that, which is what I did with that one. Mm. Cut out as much as you can if you're on this one. So where would you go next if you're doing a freehand? If you're not using the lathe for that? Is that straight onto a sander? Uh yeah. But I mean if you if I were to drill this and then uh trim it. Trim the start of it anyway. The thing with freehands, they're not always uh symmetrical. Consent, symmetrical. Mm. There, there's more at the back than the front perhaps or you know, whatever. But if you can get like a guideline uh, around the outside, just take down the first centimetre or so. So would you do that with a bandsaw initially? On a freehand, if you've got, if you can, get a rough shape out no, of it? No, 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 I'm talking about the, the, the top, let me... Oh, I see, you mean with a lathe? Yeah, if I can uh, I'll make a few lines on this. It's another thing that uh, I usually do is to to mark where the draft hole is going to go. So that uh, when I'm boring out the uh, chamber, from there down to there, make sure I get it to the right point. Right. Uh, not go too deep, not go too shallow. It doesn't matter to within a few millimetres, because you could adjust that when you actually drill the hole. Uh, but if you're, if the chamber stops sort of way up here, you're never going to reach it with a drill. With a drill, yeah. If you go too low, you end up with a thin High bottom, up. and then you might... Um, Burn it up. Burn out or poke out or whatever. So, uh, I mean, I suppose you could take these corners off with a bandsaw. Uh, I'd certainly trim this down with a bandsaw. Yeah. Uh, I'd normally do that after the initial turning Turn. in this way. You sort of trim it off down there. Thing is that when you're uh, chiseling a, a piece of wood that's you don't square, hit the end of the you don't hit the end of the stem with your chisel though. Well, no, you don't want to do that. But um, when you're drilling through a solid piece of wood or chiseling a solid piece of wood, the chisel's always in contact with the wood. 
it's quite uh, easy to work. When you're wor working on a square piece of wood, <coughs> and you start, um, excuse me, the chisels over here. Some the black one, right, that's it. So, if you're chiseling, <coughs> trying to get this round, you start there, so the chisel will touch that bit, and then nothing, then that bit. So you're banging nothing. The time. So it's, uh, yeah. If I start to <coughs> do that, you'll, you'll, you'll see, and that's... Bits flying everywhere. Yeah, well, you get that, but uh, it's the sensation <coughs> at your hands where... It's, it's the shock each time. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. and that can be a bit um, sort of nerve-wracking, off-putting, yeah. scary even. Right. Right. So that's something... It's a matter of getting used to, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You've got to keep a firm grip of your chisel, I suppose. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. So I'm not sure if that's quite right, but I can give you a brief demonstration of... Uh, Tell from the sound where it's sort of hitting, where it's hitting there. Really, once I mean, um, if you've got a suitable sanding disc with a course, you say you started with 60, 60, I can do 60 or 80, yeah, uh, something like that would make short work of uh, the initial shaping. Mm. Yeah, that's what I've done till now, that's what yeah. I did with those. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah I haven't got a band saw as yet, no. um, so it's all been done with a sanding disc, yeah, um, yeah, even from a big block right down yeah. to the size of the pipe, which. Takes a bit of time, but it, it does the job. Hmm. Yeah. I find sometimes that the higher grits actually go faster. Um, they just really cut through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Um, it, it, in some ways, the, the 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 lower grit, although it's coarser, it um, the the cut is also coarser. Yeah. Whereas when you're on the say a, a five or six hundred grit, um, it's it's a much sharper cut into the wood, yeah. a shaping, a much sharper shaping. So when, when I put a, a particular face of the block onto the thing, if I hold it at an angle, for instance, I'll get an angle straight off. Yeah. Um, whereas with the coarser one, it needs a bit of work sometimes, mm. it's, which I thought was counterintuitive. I thought mm. that the... But um, that seems to be what happens mm. sometimes. But mm. Yeah, I mean, my... Sanding, that's the one I used initially, that's, which is a 180. Right. Um, so I see you've made the actual backing for it yourself there. The timber yeah, well, it's one my uncle made many years ago. Right. It's, it's a combination of um, a bit of metal in there, a bit of wood, uh, another bit of metal you can just see there, right. and then on the surface it's uh, felt. Right, just to give it a little bit of give. Yeah. My problem that I've had, I think I mentioned this to you last time when I came, was finding a motor which I could attach stuff to. Yeah. And that's it's, it doesn't exist. Mm. Um, you can buy motors with a spindle, but then fitting something to that spindle, it, okay, I can buy them in America. You can buy certain arbors and things which will slip over it yeah. with a grub screw and, and you can tighten it over it. But um, they're quite expensive. Mm. Um, but there's nothing that you can actually just go and buy. Um, um, that will fit over a motor spindle. Well, most of the attachments uh, that I use are the ones that my uncle used to use. Yeah. And most of these um, spindles with threads on, um, on all of these machines, really, uh, there was a an old boy in a nearby village working in his shed with a, a big engineering lathe, and he could make anything. That's you know, what I need to find as an engineer. 
I've got this with this thread and I want a connecting piece to fit this thread and it'd give him the bits. Yeah, we'll go back up. a week later, there you are. You know, five shillings, that's, uh, <laughs> that'll do nicely. Have a couple of pints tonight. And, yeah. But there's not many of those about these days. So no. If you can find somebody like that. To, that's really what I want to do, is, is to get... Uh, um, I've got a nice, good quality motor. Yeah. Um, but I've got... And it, uh, it's come with a welded um, pigtail thing on it for mops, for yeah. polishing mops. Mm. And there's nothing I can do with that. Mm. And besides, for, I use it for the for polishing. Yeah. But um, I'd love to be able to just slip something over it, keep, yeah. leave the pigtail thing on it, but just slip something over mm. it, secure it with a grub screw mm. or something, and then to put a drill chuck in it or something. Yeah. Then I can... It's infinite what I can put in there. Mm. I thought of getting a, something like a bench grinder. Yeah, so that's I do have a bench grinder, uh, but it's it's a fairly basic. Um, so this thing. One, this one here, this, um, right? Yeah, similar kind of idea. Take all the protection off. You'll find it's a a straight spindle with a thread on it and a nut holding the um, right. the uh, grindstone in place. But um, if you can find. It, I suppose they're different sorts of threads, but uh, if you can find a matching thread or somebody who could make a matching thread, yeah, you know, you could fit just about anything to it. Right. Have they done generally got the power and the torque to use for that sanding? You would you say? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So mm. I would just use it on its side, basically. Yeah. Mm. Could do. Yeah, you'd have to take the uh, some of this protection, protection off, off yeah. obviously, to, to allow your access to the. Uh, the face of the sun there. But, uh, cool. I did pick up a motor once about 20 odd years ago, but a single phase motor, because all these are three phase. Right. I've got any single phase uh, stuff. But, uh, uh, picked that up second hand, that cost me nearly £100 just for that. Which is not cheap no. for second hand. Believe it or not, the motor that I got was from America. It was on eBay. It was the only one I found, which was seemed like uh, industrious enough. Um, weighed a ton, but they shipped it over. Um, I've had it a couple of years, and it works like a dream. Mm. It's, it's, it's quite quiet, it's not too noisy, um, and it handles polishing beautifully. Yeah, but it's restricted. that I've got. Mm -hmm. It comes um, it's pre drilled, and it's got the slot cut. Then you you got to do everything else sort of thing. That's not quite big enough. That's the only thing. Mm. But I have somewhere. It doesn't have to be Cumberland, you know. I'd much rather it fitted and it could be Ebonite or. I have got some Cumberland rod, which is a bit bigger, but there's nothing been done at this. Right. So it needs drilling. And then uh, at the end, the soft cutting and all this, so that would be more expensive. But that would be big enough, just about. But these are these are quite expensive. I said uh, one of those when you finish would be about thirty quid, a bit more for this because mm. more work involved. Um, I think for that one, for the for the Eskimo shape one. If you can get a bit of a, a shape out of it on the stem, like one of these, mm -hmm. then f to me it would be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to do that now, but it's it's um, mm. whenever. Well, yeah, but I could do that. What worth paying for? Yeah, the extra if it came out, yeah, yeah. I'll pay for it mm. if it's. Mm. And um, you'd you'd probably only want to use. I mean, it's it's oh, going to yeah, be yeah, like uh, a small, uh, yeah. like a yeah. Levat length. I mean, I use this one because that's the only one uh, that I've got that's big enough. No, that's fine. It's, uh, it's not too long, is it? No, no, it's all right. Because you've got to have a fair bit of length in there to accommodate uh, the, the tail end of the filter. Yeah, yeah I'm not quite sure what. Uh, Used some of this before. I can't remember what for now, but um, it drilled. 
really this is the problem. I'm trying to get it to. I can't, uh, can't remember exactly how I did it. I might. Would this chuck have been made by that uh, guy down the road? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh... So what would you do now if you had to get something made? You just don't have any need? Uh, I don't, I'm not... I haven't had the problem. Not yet, no. <laughs> That's good. No. It's going to happen, I expect, one day. Uh, there's several engineers on this industrial estate. Um, so that would be a starting point. And have a chat with them, and uh, and see what they think. Whether it's anything that uh, they could manage, or they might know somebody mm. who's been in the trade. I see straight away that's even worse. There is a wobble, isn't there? Yeah. When you adjust that, does it tighten and loose both at the same time? Both uh, uh, jaws? Yeah. It does, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're both connected to the same. All right, same rod. I have to get the right one, because both, both adjust, but one works clockwise and the other works anti-clockwise. Right. So you have to know which end you're working. Yeah, the idea of a twin so right. Does so it make any difference to the smoke? No, no, it's just that some people are very hard on the stems. Right. And they tend to sort of collapse the bit in the middle. Oh, I see, so you have a solid yeah. middle then. If to the middle side. is solid and the holes are either side, then they... Oh, I see, it connects into on. a single draft, though? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see, okay. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it'll be something like that. So, I've drilled so far, got to there and stopped. So now once I've done the the next bit of shaping, uh, you know, got it attached to that and, and sort of sh shaped it roughly into shape, I'll drill two little holes. Right. And, and how do you shape the tenon? How do you cut the tenon? Uh, that's cut on the flocking machine. That's, um, Machines galore, eh? Yeah. So this is uh, an ancient piece of uh, equipment. This is uh, certainly pre-war, maybe even pre-first war. Wow. Uh, the basics of it. Uh, it's it's uh, from France originally, I think. My uncle bought it uh, after the war. So it's basically a lathe, and then it's just cutting the... Uh, well, uh, actually, the original, it's been adapted. The original machine was more like this one, where um, uh, the motor um, drives a belt 
which turns this sh this shaft. Um, I'm not sure about this machine. If this was in the old factory in um, in Blakesley, but uh, instead of electric motors to each machine, they had a big motor driving an overhead shaft with belts coming down to several machines. Several machines like mm. this. But the principles are the same. I mean, you, you've got a spinning uh, chuck that's got multiple slots in it. It's got a hole in the middle for a drill and then slots for cutting tools. So uh, this is the one I use for boring out. Um, uh, That's for the for the mortise, is it? Uh, yeah. So I, I, the last time I used this was to drill the uh, the hole to take your filter in your pipe. Right. So this one drills a hole at the same time it faces off the the face of the wood there right so that it's, it's like a four square kind of. square to the to the hole and there's a well, I see it's doing two jobs at the same time there's only three because there's oh, another right. one there okay which cuts a slight countersink inside there you go and once you've got it set up you know, you, you can sort of rattle them off. Yeah. Similar sort of thing with the... Uh, except it's the other way around. You've got... Uh, got the main tool there that actually cuts the, uh, the tenon. It uh, and faces off the the edge square. There is a there's a slight sharp edge on corner it. on that to give right. you a, a slight radius. And then just in there, there's a, a bit to cut off the end, and another little bit to cut off uh, to cut a, uh, a slight countersink on in the end. So originally this would have, would have had a shaft and a belt drive to yeah. milk cloud it adapted. Uh, Motorise it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let you get on. That's, uh, in the general run of things, it's far more useful than a, than an actual lathe because, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of repair work that goes through this machine is, is enormous. Right. You know. It's always about stems, isn't it? The repair yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm not going to bother you with more questions now. And I'm just going to walk around a bit. Okay. Is the shop open? Can I go in there? You can go there uh, yeah. and have a look, yeah. <coughs> Thanks very much. Okay. The aristocrat, aristocrat range, thirty-four pounds. Beautiful rustication. But I'm actually going to cut this short so I can record what he's doing inside. So, oh look, downhill flake. Still got a few days left. some of the uh, Pipe Smokers magazine. I've got one and that's that one. I'm going to ask him about that. Ooh, let's see if we can find Eric. Oh no, you weren't here, were you? Why did I think you were here, Eric? I don't know. So we've got a bunch of Peterson tobacco. Some Erin Moore. Ooh, yeah. Scottish Freak. The new Charitons.
some nice free lines here, some beautiful green. Look at that, stunning. Nice shape on that. Beautiful grain. Just look at that grain. Lich Briars, the smooths. That's the one with the darker stain. And you've got some uh, the bulk full Virginia flake, plum and rum, dark bird's eye, best brown, Coniston plug, Ben, sweet peach, Bob's chocolates, McBaron's Q, Enderdale, Westmoreland, McBaron Navy flake, Boson plug. Very nice. Condor. Original, you got some long cut, some Bruno, Erin Moore. Some Amphora. HH. Oh, I might have some, try some of that old dark fired. Jermaine's. Special Latakia flake. What is that? Oil Jersey Cavendish Virginia. I don't think I've tried that. PC mixture. Dunhill flake. BB 1938. Three year mature. Dark flake. Sweet chicken. Durbar. And there's quite a few people who do talk about the turbo, but I don't think I've ever tried it. And you've got some uh, Sam Gowith. Right, I'm going to pop back in. So this is what I was talking about in one of my videos, some of the, what he calls seconds, £22.50 pipes, £17.50. What would you say is your biggest market? Would it be still England or would it be the States or? Uh, no, it's mostly. in the States. Have you noticed an uptake of the hobby in the last decade or five years or one year? Um, I've always been busy, never, never, never been a lack of smokers from my hobby. Yeah, a lot of them, whether that's just because there's less people making pipes. <laughs> So you wouldn't have, for instance, if you've grilled uh, a mortise and then find the next day when you've taken it indoors and it's warmed up that it's expanded and the stem's too tight. That you, you, you don't find that here? No. Uh, I think in the States they have much more extreme 
Yeah. And I've seen some of the uh, some of the videos on YouTube when people talk about you know stabilizing temperatures and things like that before they mm. when it gets too cold they just don't work obviously mm. because of the comfort but also because yeah. of that I think um, I think that's what they were saying anyway yeah. unless I misunderstood it. Yeah. Don't know. People who get loose stems, and I wonder sometimes if they've been ex subject to extreme heat. Mm. I, I must admit, I get in my I most of the time I'm in my office at home. I've got a small room at home, which is my office, and I do when I'm indoors. That's where I smoke. I don't yeah. smoke anywhere else in the house. Mm. Um, and some pipes, if I haven't smoked it for a long time, they can have the stems can be loose. Yeah. So I suppose all the moisture over time has completely gone out of the pipe um, and, and it just contracts that little bit yeah. uh, sometimes I'll just stick a bit of honey on it or um, once I smoke it it then expands enough yeah. and then it'll it sorts it out generally speaking hmm. no cause there's, there's uh, quite a lot of metal work on these machines so when you're handling the machines and they're cold it's it's unpleasant Right, that's yeah. the worst part this time of year. Um. for a first go.
What's the difference between those two uh, composites, the brown and the yellow? Um, they're both uh, finishing compounds, but of different grades. That's the finest one. Gives the best polish. What's that called? That. Uh, it's uh, P one seven five, I think, or something like that. Where where would you say is the best p place to buy all these kind of supplies? Yeah, well, I buy mops and finishing compounds uh, and even methylated spirits for mixing stains with from a website called The Polishing Shop. Oh, I think I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. They've got no end of stuff. You look at the website and you think, well, oh, must have one of those, must have one of those, must have one of those. I think people do your website and all. There we go, one finished pipe. that when he retired your uncle? 86. 86. And how long had you been apprenticing for? Uh, I'd been helping him for well, know, like five, six years, I suppose, making pipes. Right. Only doing certain of the jobs, though. Um, yeah, I think I saw that on your write-up on your website. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of a description how you got into it. Yeah. Was it like the repairs and things like that you were doing? Um, Was it or not? No, no, he did the repairs. Um, I started off uh, using the the two flocking machines, boring out and, and fitting stems, mm. um, which it's it's basically setting the machine up. So obviously, he'd do that first, and I'd just do the operation, and then um, got to know the machine and, and started setting it up yourself. Yeah. Um, do you, do you still have the first pipe that you ever made? No. <laughs> no. It was you probably didn't consider it as something momentous no, at the time. No. Yeah. You see, I never made a pipe right through. Not uh, in those days. You know, I was doing Parts. jobs on pipes. Uh, the other job I did was the uh, the. Uh, the finishing, so, um, so the, the final mopping, polishing, staining, varnishing. Mm. Um, uh, that got me used to using the a spinning mop. Uh, the, the hardest part is the sanding. Um, 
So I was, I mean, even after he'd retired and I took over and we were here, he'd come up and do the fine sanding. Uh, and I'd practice in between times on, you know, sort of any old bit of wood sort of thing until mm. uh, I felt that I could, I could do it. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's um, did, were you smoking a pipe at the time when you first started? Oh yeah, I've been smoking oh, a pipe since I was uh, seventeen. All right. Yeah, so I was just wondering whether, see, for you, you took it up as a job, and that was you just took over your uncle's position and you carried mm-hmm. it on family business. Whereas for me, I'm coming at it as a result of enjoying the hobby of pipe smoking and then wanting to just mess around with pipes yeah. and then thinking to myself, well, maybe mm-hmm. I can make it myself, kind of yeah. thing. And it's just something which I enjoy doing. Mm. But um, taking it to the next level is a, <laughs> a different ball game. Just that yeah. first go on the lathe. Yeah. It was, um, if if that sort of heavy kickback that you get on the chisel is standard fare, that's heavy going. I mean, that mm. takes getting used to. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, I suppose it's a question of uh, adapting whatever machine you end up with to, or adapting to the machine. Mm. You know, I don't think there's many people who use the method we use for, for the hand turning. But um, Generally speaking, the tool rest <coughs> is usually on the same level as the centre of the lathe, mm. of the truck. Yeah. Right, okay. And quite close to the work. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so I've never had any uh, formal training in woodwork well, or, in, or anything, in, really. And neither did I in photography. No. no formal training. I once went to a seminar. I paid, I don't remember how much it was, but I, I remember I took one, it was a two-day seminar, and I took one tip from it, which I still use to this day. And for that in itself, because the rest of it I'd learned through experience before. Yeah. Um, but I thought I'd go to a course in case I'm missing something, and I learned one tip from it, and I use it to this day. Yeah, and that's that? going back 15 years, you know, 15 what, years ago. What was that tip? Then? It was just how to set up studio lights. Yeah. And in terms of the ratios of the lighting yeah. and using soft boxes and things like that, yeah. which um, I use to this day. And it's it's just, I wouldn't say it's set me apart from anybody else, but it's just kind of created my signature look to my pictures. Yeah. And I've then transferred that onto doing other types, such as off-camera flash, sort of on location where I haven't got studio lights, and um, using just sort of uh, portable flash, but yeah. still the same principle. Mm. And um, that's that's... One, it was worth it just for that one yeah. tip. Yeah. Mm. That's why today, for instance, that's really what I wanted was to kind of smash out any misconceptions that I've got about it and to just yeah. to see whether it's something that I feel I, that it's worth investing in a lathe and whether it's worth um, getting into or if yeah. it's really something that I don't want to do. But mm. we shall see. I'm going to try it first with a drill press and um, freehand yeah. and yeah. see how it goes. I'm still not sure how I'm going to work out with the stems, as you say, because I can't turn the stem. The, mm. the, the, the uh, tenons. No. Um, so I'm going to have to work backwards. I don't quite know how. In other words, I'm going to have to fit to the um, uh, drill to fit the stem, yeah. which is really working backwards. Mm. So we shall see. Anyway, Mike, thanks again. You're I really welcome. appreciate your time. It's really nice of you to give up your afternoon uh-huh. and it's a real education to, to watch you. So thank you very, very much. Really That's much okay. appreciated. And as I said before, hopefully I won't leave it two years again before I come and say hello again. This is London calling.